Exercise 1, AutoCAD 2016. Uh, today what we're going to take a look at is this model that you see here. Our goal is to create that. And so we're going to use some of the tools, the sketch tools, as well as the uh, solids tools inside AutoCAD's 2016 to create this. First of all, some of the settings you want to make sure you have under the workspace switching. Hit this little arrow to the right of that gear. Turn on 3D modeling. Now we're going to go to new and just pick the typical AutoCAD template. Just double click on it. Now from here we could go ahead and we're going to turn our snap on and notice you could really draw with any of these uh, types of tools, the polyline, the line, whichever. But in this case we want to start off with a rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and click on rectangle. I'm going to snap to one of the grid spaces. And I'm going to just click. And I want our rectangle to be approximately 3 by 5. Go ahead and click. Now let's take a look at the parametric tools. Now in this instance, we really don't necessarily need the parametric tools, but it's actually a nice function. When you actually are building in solids in here, there's actually a better tool that um, Autodesk has, and it's Autodesk Inventor, especially for mechanical. And so in this case, um, when you do add these, the parametrics, the dimensions, and things, and constraints, uh, they don't carry over to the solid, unfortunately, at least from what I discovered. Again, the Autodesk Inventor Professional would be a much better choice for a complex modeling. But if you're doing some basic models and you just want a quick one and you have AutoCAD, here you go. Some nice tools inside here. All right, so you'll see that we have auto constraint. Let's go ahead and click on auto constraint and just click here and drag a fence to surround the geometry. Click again and hit enter. And it should automatically put in, in this case, it put in a horizontal as well as parallelism and perpendicularity for us. So that means that if anyone goes in and tampers with the lines, they're going to stay horizontal or parallel or perpendicular to each other. It's actually a very nice tool those of you who have learned how to make, use all the tricks with AutoCAD to make unusual geometries. It eliminates a lot of those tricks that you used to have to use for years um, to use the parametrics. For example, tangency is so easy with the tangent tool up here. So um, anyhow, we're going to move on to the dimensions now. I'm going to go ahead and select the vertical dimension. If you hit the little arrow here, you'll see there's linear, horizontal, vertical. I'm going to go with vertical and then just pick on the two points here, drag it to the right. We'll see we have five inches and hit enter. And now I'm going to go to horizontal and click on these two, drag it up, hit enter. Now the nice thing about parametrics is here we go. If I hit escape, I could go ahead and double click on any of these and change the value. Let's say I want to make this four inches wide, just hit enter and it updates. The only downside, like I was trying to explain earlier, is that this, unfortunately if you change this, the 3D model does not update from what I've experienced here. Again, as I said, Inventor might be a better option, but still some nice functionality there. So I'm going to click on the Home button up here, and now I'm going to go to the Solid option. Now, um, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the Extrude, and I'm just going to click and drag a fence to surround the geometry. Click and hit enter and drag it up. And it needs to be 0.5 for the thickness. Okay. If you want, you could go to the home button. And over here you have the 2D wireframe. You could change it to conceptual or shades of gray. Shades of gray, I think, is a little bit easier to see. The conceptual is nice too. But now I'm going to go ahead and we want to put um, that block on here. Now rather than draw it with the rectangle and extrude it up, I want to show you another tool. You have primitives inside here. Primitives are boxes, cylinders, cones, spheres, pyramids, wedge, torus. We're going to go with the box tool. And we're going to go ahead and select this corner here and drag it off over here. Okay, and the only downside is sometimes you don't see everything as you would hope to. I'm going to go ahead and type in 3 there. 
and then it was at set to 1.5 and then I'm gonna go ahead and I hit enter and then I went ahead and uh, I'm gonna make sure 0.5 is in there Hit enter again and so we just really built a stack of another block on top of another it's kind of like essentially they're they're not attached necessarily even though they are contacting because they're not one unit yet we might want to actually especially if we're going to shell this make them one unit and the way to do that is with the boolean tools so we have solid union solid subtract and solid intersect we're going to go with solid union and you just select the two entities and watch this notice this little line that's here once you hit enter after they're both selected it disappears because now they're one entity I'm going to go to, instead of shades of gray, I'm going to go to conceptual. Okay, I'm going to rotate this around here. Just holding shift and the middle mouse button, holding it down and rotating. Remember, you could use these two to rotate around. Okay, we want to go ahead and put some fillets in. So let's go to solid here. And it was actually on the home tool, but over here underneath chamfer edge, you'll see fillet edge. Go ahead and select fillet edge. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and type in, I want a one inch radius. And now you just select the, see the little pointer there, get on that edge and click. Hit enter and enter again and it puts it in. If you want to try it again now, go ahead and uh, right click and repeat fillet edge. Get on that edge, hit enter two times. So filleting is pretty easy stuff. But you can see it's put the radiuses in looks pretty good let's try chamfer now go to the chamfer tool underneath fillet edge hit the little arrow find chamfer in this case let's put in 0.125 and select these edges here and uh, make sure 0.125 is entered okay and in this case um, it didn't take initially let me try that again and it's because we're starting off too large. Let me hit escape. I'm gonna go chamfer, make sure we put our 0.125 for the radius. Make sure you click on distance there. And this next one for expression, 0.125. That makes it a 45 degree angle. So for the expression distance, just make sure it's 0.125. You do have the ability to put in angles. But um, now I'll just click on the edges all the way around. Hit enter. Again, you could right click, repeat chamfer edge. And it should remember your 0.125 setting. Go ahead and select those edges. Hit enter two times. All right. Now the next tool, this is actually really pretty neat, is the press pull. Now before you could just use press pull, you have to have some sort of geometry on the surface drawn. And this is very similar to uh, some of the new modelers that are out there. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to the home and we're going to use a circle tool. And I'm just going to glide up right over here and I like to put it right about there. Again, I have the grid on. I'm going to click and I do want a 0.5 diameter. Now we could go ahead and select the press pull. This is pretty, pretty neat. Go ahead and get in there, click, and drag it down. And voila, it creates the void. Okay, so there you've seen three different methods. The first one we looked at was just drawing a profile and extruding it, a given depth. The second one was using the primitives features. And the third one was drawing a sketch and using press pull. So any of those options you can use. And notice I used them all on one model. Okay, now the next thing I'd like to show you here is let's go to the solids tool and the shell feature. I'm gonna first rotate this, so I'm looking at the underside. And I'm gonna go to shell. And we'll go ahead and put in, we just want it to be point, uh, 0.06. And now we just select the faces we want to remove. So I select these three faces, hit enter. Oh, put the shell in again. Uh, in this case, 0 0.06 and exit. And there we go. Now you can see 
it has shelled it out and removed those three faces. So essentially, you select the faces you want to remove. And now we have something like an enclosure. Okay, just to review some of the other labs that are in the, the training guide that I'm constructing. When we go start a new part here, we'll go back with the AutoCAD. And you could go ahead and test these out. In this case, this is the first one, Lab 1. Just go to the Home, use the Polyline tool. And again, the grid is a nice option. Lock those in according to the parameters that are given in the manual. And just draw what you see. And again, using the dimensions, these aren't the actual dimensions that are given. I'm just drawing them out. Just go ahead and hit C for close. And then you could go to parametric, use the auto constraint, click and drag a fence to surround it. Hit enter and it'll auto constrain those. Now you could go to the dimensions and we could go ahead and add some of these dimensions in. And again, remember, I'm going to hit escape here. You could change these if you double click. So you want that to be four inches. Hit enter. Notice how all the geometry updates. So you could go ahead and add these in. Now be aware you can overdefine it. And that might not be desirable. In this case, I'm going to make this 4.5. And then I'm going to repeat that. We'll make this one. 3.75. Oops. Anyhow, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but once you're ready, now if you remember, if you go to the solid, you have the ability to use press pull, you have the ability to use the extrude. Uh, in this case, you could model this with primitives, but you'd have to draw it in a series of rectangles. So again, I'm going to use the extrude here. Just click and surround the geometry. Maybe go home, which will bring you to an isometric view. Let's try that again. And hit enter. And then you just put in the depth. In this case, it's supposed to be one inch thick. And if you recall, you have the ability to go in and like, for example, under the home here, choose if you'd like the different conceptual or shades of gray. Okay, and that concludes exercise one.